Welcome to Defending Digital. I'm Chad Warner. Today, I'd like to share with you tips from the book, Cyberbullying and the Wild Wild Web, What You Need to Know by J.A. Hitchcock. I'll give you my review and summary of the book, and you may want to get a copy to read it for yourself. The book gives an overview of cyberbullying with some basic and helpful advice. It would have been much more helpful if it were more specific. For example, it advises talking to your child if they're a victim of cyberbullying or the perpetrator of cyberbullying. The book could have included scripts or sample conversations. The book also recommends using filtering and monitoring software and lists a few examples, but doesn't describe what features to look for or how to effectively use the software or how to talk to your child about it. The book would have benefited from more positive stories, telling how kids survive cyberbullying, maybe with the help of their parents or others. Almost all of the stories are negative, showcasing the emotional and physical damage cyberbullying can lead to. Because the book contains graphic stories with sex and violence, it's for mature readers. The book is repetitive. Similar advice is given in different chapters. The author is the founder of Working to Halt Online Abuse, W-H-O at sign, which runs the websites haltabuse.org and the kids and teens division haltabusektd.org. The author was cyberstalked in 1996, and she dealt with the results for 10 years. Now I'll go through the book in order of chapter with my notes. From the foreword, almost half of teens have been cyberbullied in the past year. Two-thirds of them think it's a serious problem. Only one-sixth of parents are aware of the scope or intensity of cyberbullying. From the chapter, Who are Cyberbullies? 43% of students were cyberbullied by someone they knew who was their age. 59% of cyberbullies are girls. From the chapter, What is Cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is technically cyberstalking, repeated online communications after the harasser has been asked to stop. The media coined the term cyberbullying to refer to cyberstalking done by kids and teens. Girls are more likely to spread rumors. Boy, boys are more likely to post hurtful pictures or videos. From the chapter, What if your child is a cyberbully? Warning signs that your child is a cyberbully. 1. When you approach, the child changes or closes on the screen. 2. The child turns off the phone and places it upside down so you can't see the screen. 3. The child uses the computer or phone frequently and or at all hours of the night. 4. The child gets annoyed if they don't have access to the computer or phone. 5. The child avoids talking about what they do on the computer or phone. 6. The child laughs excessively when on the computer or phone. And seven, the child has been involved in bullying incidents at school or has been targeted by bullies in the past. If you learn that your child has been cyberbullying, one, ask why they're doing it. Let them know that you want to help. Two, tell them it could lead to legal action, even arrest. Three, tell them they could get kicked out of school, lose their job, lose a scholarship, or lose a college admission. Four, Consider going with your child to the school counselor, the, child, to the child's teacher, and or the principal. Five, require that the child use devices in a common room in the house. Six, consider filtering and monitoring software. Seven, consider limiting the child's time on the internet. Eight, have the child delete cyberbullying posts, messages, etc. Nine, if necessary, tell the parents of the child's friends what's going on. 10. Have the child apologize to cyberbullying victims. And 11. Have the child read stories about cyberbullying victims to understand their pain. From the chapter, When Sexting Becomes Sextortion, the FBI gives this advice. 1. Don't blindly trust that people are who they claim to be. 2. Don't send pictures to strangers. And 3. Don't post pictures that you wouldn't show your grandma. And Interpol's advice for cyberbullying victims 1. Cease all contact with the aggressor. 2. Report to local police, ISP, that's the internet service provider, website admin, and trusted adult. And 3. Don't pay for sextortion. From the chapter, Social Media Websites and Apps, What to Do When Attacked Anonymously Online. 1. Reply with, please stop contacting me. 2. Report the bullying or harassment to the site or app. If you can't find a contact link under the privacy, support, or contact pages, try emailing abuse at domain. 3. Delete or block the bully. 4. Lock down your privacy settings. 
5. Delete anyone you don't know from your friend and follower list. 6. Delete personal info from your profile, phone numbers, addresses, birth date, email address, etc. 7. Delete any online photos or videos that you wouldn't want to have spread. And 8. If bullying continues, save screenshots, messages, etc. If you receive threats of physical harm, file a police report. Tell a trusted adult what's happening. From the chapter Cell and Smartphone Know-How, what to do when cyberbullied on your phone. 1. Take a screenshot of the text message and the sender's number. 2. Tell the phone provider about the texts. 3. Do an online search of the number that texted you. Put the phone number in quotes and find the, find, find the phone service provider of that number and tell them about the text. 4. If the text threatened physical harm, contact law enforcement. And 5. Block the number. And phone security and safety. Step 1. Enable the screen lock. 2. Pay attention to permissions requested by apps. 3. Keep Bluetooth off when not needed. 4. Enable anti-theft features like block, find, and wipe. 5. Don't open suspicious links. 6. Only enter sensitive data on HTTPS pages. And 7. Use cellular data rather than public Wi-Fi. From the chapter, What Parents and Educators Need to Know. If your child is cyberbullied, 1. Tell your child to keep everything they receive or is posted. Take screenshots. 2. Encourage your child to tell a trusted adult what's happening. 3. Have the child message the bully just once to say, please stop contacting me, and keep a copy of that message. 4. Tell your child not to respond to the bully anymore, but to keep gathering any new bullying material. 5. Send a complaint to that person's ISP. 6. If the bully created a website or account to bully your child, complain to the host or service provider. 7. If the bullying continues, contact haltabusektd.org. If your child is cyberbullying others, 1. See if there's a reason your child is acting out, such as a home situation, parental divorce, parent away at work, they're struggling at school, uh, etc. 2. Seek counseling if necessary. 3. Examine your relationship with your child. And 4. Examine the interpersonal behavior that you're modeling. Are you being a good example? Advice for parents. 1. Get familiar with the sites and apps that your child uses. Friend or follow your child. Tell them it's to keep them safe, not to snoop. 2. Keep computers in rooms where they can be observed, but don't keep looking over your child's shoulder. 3. Set daily cutoff time for any mobile devices. 4. Limit who can contact your child, and vice versa. 5. Put filtering or monitoring software on any device that your child uses. And 6. Monitor browsing history. You can have your kids sign a pledge like the safety pledge at haltabusektd.org. And I have a link to that in the blog post that goes along with this episode at defendingdigital.com. Give your child a list of things that they may share online. From the chapter, Online Safety Tips, Resources, and Where to Go for Help. Cyber Street Smarts. 1. Don't trust everybody that you meet online, even if they claim to be a mutual friend. 2. Only approve friends that you really know. 3. Be careful what you post online. It can and will be used against you. 4. Create a strong password and don't share it. 5. Use a generic username or email address. Never give your real name, age, address, workplace, or phone number online without permission from parents. 6. Lock down your privacy settings. 7. Don't send sexy photos of yourself to others. They could go public. Also, it's against the law. 8. Only say online what you would say to someone's face. 9. If you're not comfortable with someone who contacts you, don't respond. Block or ignore unwanted users. And 10. If you're bothered online, don't defend yourself or seek revenge, which only escalates bullying. And then filtering and monitoring software. This is going to be easier to look at the blog post because these are all links, uh, but I'll just read through them here. Uh, there's Computer Time, which is a screen time software for Windows. NetNanny, which uh, is parental controls and internet filtering. Norton Family Premier, also parental controls and internet filtering. My Mobile Watchdog, parental controls for Android and iOS. 
And then there are various parental controls for some of the different uh, cellular carriers, mobile providers, AT&T Wireless, Verizon Wireless, T-Mobile, Sprint. Uh, iPhone has its own parental controls, and then Virgin Mobile. And organizations that help victims of cyberbullying, sextortion, etc. Again, um, all of these are linked from the blog post. Um, they are WHOKTD, uh, which is the Kids, Kids and Teens Division of WHOA. There's Stand Up to Bullying, iSafe, the Institute for Responsible Online and Cell Phone Communication, Cyberbullying Research Center, Interpol, Think You Know, NetSmarts, StopBullying.gov, Cyberbully Help, and Delete Cyberbullying. If you found this summary helpful, then I suggest that you read the book, Cyberbullying and the Wild Wild Web, What You Need to Know by J.A. Hitchcock. And I have a link to that in the blog post that goes along with this episode at DefendingDigital.com. And while you're there, you can also see the resources page where I have additional books about internet safety, security, and digital parenting. What you should do. So I've selected the top tips from the book and put them in a couple categories. Um, here are the ones that are for parents. One, teach your kids the advice in the next section, which I'll get to in a minute. Tell your kids that they can come to you with any cyberbullying issue. Two, get familiar with the sites and apps your kids use. Three, set daily cutoff times for any mobile devices. Four, put filtering or monitoring software on any devices your kids use. Consider those listed above and also see my post on parental controls and internet filtering software. And I did a previous episode on that as well. Five, watch for the warning signs that your child is a cyberbully, which I've uh, described earlier. Six, if your child has been cyberbullying, address the issue using the advice earlier in this episode. Now some advice for kids. So these are things that you can teach your kids to help them out with cyberbullying issues. One, never give out personal info. Your real name, age, address, workplace, phone number, birth date, email address, etc. without permission from your parents. Keep personal info off your profiles. Two, lock down your privacy settings. Three, be careful what you post online. It can and will be used against you. Four, don't blindly trust that people are who they claim online, even if they claim to be a mutual friend. Only approve friends that you really know and can verify. Five, delete anyone you don't know from your friend or follower list. Six, don't send pictures to strangers. Seven, don't send or post pictures that you wouldn't show your grandma. They could go public. And don't send nude or uh, partially nude photos of yourself. It's against the law, and those photos could go public. Eight, delete any online photos or videos that you wouldn't want to have spread. And nine, if you're not comfortable with someone who contacts you, don't respond. Block or ignore unwanted users. And then how to respond to cyberbullying. One, as long as it continues, keep all bullying content that you receive or it gets posted. Save messages, screenshots, etc. Two, reply to the bully with, please stop contacting me. Then stop contacting the bully. Three, delete or block the bully. Four, report bullying to your parent or another trusted adult. Five, report bullying to the sites or apps that the bully is using. If you can't find a contact link under the privacy support or contact pages, try emailing abuse at domain. Six, report bullying to the bully's ISP, their internet service provider. Seven, if the bully sends text messages, report them to the bully's service provider. You can search online for their phone number to find who their service provider is. Eight, if you're threatened with physical harm, report it to the local police. And nine, don't pay for sextortion. Again, you can find this book and others on internet safety, security, and digital parenting at defendingdigital.com. And check out the resources page while you're there. I would love it if you would take a minute to leave a rating or review in whatever app or site you're using to listen to this podcast. And uh, you can subscribe to the podcast as well if you haven't already. And uh, go ahead and tell a friend or family member about the podcast, someone who's interested in internet safety, uh, and see if they would be interested in subscribing as well. Thanks.